Ever notice a faint gray or a white ring hugging the edge of the colored part of the eye? If you've seen it in your grandparents, you probably shrugged. But see that same ring in a 30-something year old and my doctor brain perks up. Quick favor before we start, drop a comment if you've ever seen this and what was your first impression? And if you're new here, hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, obesity and family doc. And today we're decoding the mystery ring around the cornea. Is it normal or a red flag for your metabolism? First, what are you actually seeing? The ring is called a corneal arcus. It's a grayish, sometimes pearly circle near the edge of the iris. It doesn't usually affect vision. It doesn't hurt and it often shows up in both eyes. In older adults, this is so common it's practically a senior merit badge. The reason is simple. With time, tiny fat carrying particles in the blood, lipoproteins, can deposit in the outer layers of the cornea. The cornea itself is clear, but the periphery gets a little frosted. That's why grandma and grandpa reads their books just fine. The center stays clear. So if it's benign in older folks, why am I talking about it? Because the same ring in younger adults can be your body whispering, hey, check the engine. I'm going to keep you in suspense for one more minute because understanding the why makes the what to do obvious. Think of cholesterol like cargo traveling on ships. Those ships, APOB containing lipoproteins like LDL and VLDL, move fats and cholesterol around. When there's too much cargo or the docks are jammed, hello insulin resistance. Traffic backs up. The spillover shows up in places it shouldn't like your arteries. And yes, sometimes the corneal edge. That's corneal arcus, a cosmetic clue that can mirror what's happening deeper in the body. All right, when should you worry? Age matters. Over about 50 or 60, like where I'm at in life, is usually a normal age-related finding. Under 45. That's when my radar blips. Under 40, big blip. In younger people, corneal arcus can be associated with high lipids, including familial hypercholesterolemia, an inherited condition that raises LDL from the start of life. Translation, if you've got the ring young, you may also have higher lifetime exposure to these particles, and that increases cardiovascular risk. How do you tell the difference between normal badge and metabolic warning flare? Context matters. Age, family history of early heart disease, early skin clues like xanthelasma, those yellowish eyelid plaques, your waistline, blood pressure, and what your labs show. And remember, while the arcus itself doesn't harm vision, it can be the only obvious sign that your internal chemistry needs attention. Here's a quick myth buster. This is not the same as the coppery Kesa Faisha ring from Wilson's disease, and not the chalky limbo changes from UV exposure that people confuse it with. Corneal arcus is typically gray-white and evenly spaced around the edge. Also, here's a fun nerd fact. It often leaves a tiny clear gap right at the border called the lucid interval. File that under things only eye doctors and curious YouTube communities know. Let me share a quick story. A patient in his mid-30s comes in for routine care. Healthy, active, no symptoms. I noticed the arcus. He brushed it off. My granddad had that. We checked his labs. LDL and APOB were high. Triglycerides up, HDL down. A1C nudging toward prediabetes. Family history, dad had a heart attack at 49. That ring was his wake up call. We got serious about nutrition. Prioritized low carb, cleaned up those seed oils, improved sleep, and yes, paired lifestyle with medication for a season while we drove risk down. Because in the world I live in, medications serve as bridge therapy, but not a permanent solution. And by the way, he's doing great. The ring stayed, but his risk, not so much. And before we continue, let me pause for a second. If this is helpful, hit like and subscribe so more people find root cause answers, not just symptom band-aids because about halfway in is where most people's bounce. Don't, let's discuss action steps first. What should you do if you're under 45 and spot the ring, or you're at any age with a strong family history? Step one, 
get the right labs. Don't stop at total cholesterol. Ask for a fasting lipid panel plus an ApoB to A ratio if available. Because triglycerides and HDL are way more predictive of a future heart attack than the total cholesterol or total LDL. And consider a lipoprotein small particle A once in a lifetime. I also like to peek at the A1C or fasting insulin to gauge insulin resistance. Step two, address the engine. Not just the dashboard lights. If insulin resistance is driving the traffic jam, lower the traffic. That means curbing sugar and refined starches, the foods that jack up insulin and push VLDL production. My clinic bias is clear. Low carb approaches often improve triglycerides, raise HDL, and shrink those risky small LDL particles. If you're carnivore or keto curious, structure it well and measure the response. If you're not, you can still win big by ditching ultra processed foods and liquid sugars. Step three, mine your fats. Swap seed oils for boca, butter, olive oil, coconut, and avocado oils, as well as your favorite animal fats while you clean up carbs. Choose protein-centered meals with real food. If you tolerate dairy, go for minimally processed options. If not, skip it. Hydrate, but not so late that you're up all night. Salt to knead on low carb and keep your minerals in check. Step four, stack the lifestyle wins. Sleep is metabolic medicine. Aim for consistent bed and wake times. Manage stress like it actually counts. Because it does. Move your body daily. Walks, resistance training, and lots of neat movement, better known as non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or any movement you're having when you're not exercising. Your arteries and your labs will thank you. Step five. Don't be dogmatic about meds. I know this is controversial in the low carb community, but if your risk is high, especially with familiar hypercholesterolemia, lifestyle plus medication may be the safest unwrap. And as I mentioned earlier, a temporary bridge until you adopt a lifestyle that will do even better than medicines ever will. We're not choosing teams, we're choosing outcomes. Recheck labs and track progress. The ring probably won't fade, but your risk profile can. Here are two lesser known pearls before we land this plane. First, the ring usually shows up in both eyes. If it's strikingly one-sided, that's unusual. Talk to your clinician. We might consider blood flow issues on that side. Second, the ring itself doesn't blur your vision. If you're noticing vision changes, that's a separate issue. Get an eye exam and make sure nothing else is going on. So here's the bottom line. A gray ring around your cornea is usually harmless in older adults. In younger adults, especially under 45, it's a nudge to check the metabolic machinery. Don't ignore a free clue from your body. If you're seeing this and thinking, that might be me, I've put a quick checklist of labs and lifestyle steps in the description. And if you've learned something today, tap like and subscribe and share this with a person who's always noticed tiny details in the mirror. And if you want to learn more about why low-carb keto and carnivore diets improve your eye health, check out the video right here on the screen. It's amazing how reducing carbs can improve your eye health. Thanks again for coming to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one.